It's great to be back. I'm not sure how many of you were here last year, but um, the Solar Electric Light Fund is an organization founded in 1990 uh, with the goal of bringing clean, sustainable solar uh, electricity to some of the two billion people in the world that don't have access to modern energy. It's uh, sometimes hard to believe my friends often are incredulous. People who grow up in this country, um, they take electricity for granted. But um, to think that a third of humanity does not have even a light bulb overhead, sometimes uh, it's a sobering thought. So our mission has been uh, to bring sustainable solar power. In the 90s, the focus was on um, home lighting systems. And I was really warmed and, and, and thrilled, actually, to see Sheila Kennedy's uh, lecture last night and to learn about the incredible work that she's doing uh, advancing energy portable uh, LED lighting technology, and we're very excited to work with her to bring some of her portable lighting solutions to, to our projects. Um, having said that, uh, we think that, that light is just the beginning of the needs. Uh, the, the fact that energy poverty cripples uh, almost every aspect of development. So uh, what has happened in the last few years is our mission has expanded to look at a, a broader range of applications that we can bring into these communities using solar power for a, a wide range of applications for clean water, healthcare, education, uh, economic development, communication access. Um, more recently, uh, we've started a project in Benin, West Africa. This picture you see, the woman on, on the right is Ms. Bonakita Setemu. She's from the village of Dunkasa in the district of Kalale in uh, northern Benin. She's holding a kerosene lamp. Um, the district of Kalale, um, if I can point it out, Here we go. Um, this is Benin. It's a small country right next to Nigeria, between Nigeria and Togo. And uh, Kalale District is right here. It's a district of 44 villages, 100,000 people. Not one of those villages has access to electricity. And our goal is to uh, electrify the entire district um, and provide a model that can be expanded to the rest of Benin and, and, and Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, some of the applications that will be included in this, this uh, district-wide project will include uh, solar water pumping, power for rural health clinics to store vaccines and provide lights for operating at night. Uh, we're going to electrify the schools in each of the, the, the villages so that children can have uh, power not just for lighting but for computers. And uh, one of the more um, innovative aspects of this project is we're going to set up a solar-powered Wi-Fi network throughout the entire district so that in each village there will be a kiosk, and uh, children uh, can have access to high-speed internet access and voice over IP um, using the, the latest in, in wireless technology. We'll, we'll set up a, a solar-powered business center, micro-enterprise center in each of the villages so that small businesses can have power to run their, their, their operations. Uh, the homes will be electrified. Um, street lighting to uh, improve uh, security for the village and social cohesion. And another very innovative aspect of the project, actually the one which I'm most interested in, is the, the drip irrigation component. Well, right now in Kalale District, for six months of the year, there's no rainfall and no food production whatsoever. Um, to address this problem, we will be combining solar water pumping with drip irrigation to uh, help farmers grow fruits and vegetables during the dry season. And our hope is that um, they will actually generate enough income from the sale of produce to, to pay for the water pumping and the drip irrigation. So we will have a sustainable business model that can be scaled up through the private sector or through public-private partnerships. Um, you know, in, in today's world, uh, there's a lot of talk about, about a sustainable development. Um, the United Nations has put out their Millennium Development Goals. People are focused on issues of clean water and health care and education and economic development. But what continu continuously surprises me is the lack of attention to energy as a fundamental component in the development process. It's often sort of ignored or, or left out of the discussion. And I think it's time to bring energy as a human right and as a fundamental building block in, in, in the development process to the foreground. And, and let more people think about the ways in which we can harness sustainable, clean energy and use it for uh, all these wonderful things that need to happen, providing clean water and better health care and education. So uh, our, our mission now is to, is to really push this idea of energy as a, as a human right. 
and, and to demonstrate in very practical ways uh, how energy can uh, kickstart all of these other development efforts. Um, that's it. Uh, not much time to talk, but I'd love to engage in further dialogue with you all. Uh, this is my contact information. We, we do encourage you all to, to invest in this carbon offset uh, initiative. It's very important. Um, and one of the nice things about the thing that, that PopTech has done in, in partnership with eBay, and I, and I thank eBay as well for their efforts, is this is a wonderful opportunity to address climate change in your own personal lives while at the same time bringing very tangible benefits to people in remote villages in the developing world. And that's an, that's an awesome combination of objectives. So please take time to visit the, uh, the PopTech carbon neutral uh, site and uh, offset your carbon and help make the world a, a brighter place. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, my man. Thank you. I'll see you soon.